Good morning. Good morning. We are looking again after some time. We have seen uh, so far several uh, uh, topics in analysis of structures. We have also seen how the earthquake uh, forces are to be considered and we have seen that under these various loads the members develop various types of internal forces, the shear force, bending moment, axial force and torsional moment. Our task now starts with designing these uh, members. We shall be considering design of RCC members and uh, limit state method will be extensively uh, used in this particular process uh, where uh, we will consider that once the moment is determined due to various loads the next task will be either to check the reinforcement provided or to design the reinforcement required for resisting the internal forces which are developed there. The entire presentation will be covering these various uh, subtopics, uh, assumptions made in the theory of bending. We will be considering the design of members subjected to bending and shear, the material stress strain curves which are uh, available for uh, predicting the behavior of material. Then we have the stress block parameters which are required from the theory of bending. Then we have three categories of beams, the under reinforced, balance section and the over reinforced. Then we will consider flexural behavior concept as is implemented in ETAPS because in the end you will be using ETAPS for uh, analysis and design of structure. So we have to see how ETAPS finally tackles this problem of design and the code based solution for RC flexural members over here. And lastly we will see how the shear reinforcement is determined for uh, the beams. <coughs> The basic assumptions made in the uh, design of flexural member uh, are as we have seen in strength of materials. The plane section before bending remain plane after bending. So if you have got a member which is let us say So if you have got for example let us say a beam and if you take a section which is let us say all the members uh, points are in one plane after bending the uh, deformed shape may be like this. So the bottom and the top uh, surface may bend like this while this particular section which was straight from top to bottom now bends in this fashion. So we say that all member points which were in one plane, vertical plane, now they remain in one plane but in the inclined direction. So on the opposite side if you have got similarly a section like this, it would bend in this fashion and the various straight fibers will bend in this particular fashion and so on. So we make this important assumption that the plane section before bending remain plane after bending. So at any point if you want to see what is the change in length of a particular fiber which had a straight length from this point to this point, you can easily determine how much it they have come closer or how much they have gone away from each other and so on. So some points might have shifted away from each other below the neutral axis and so on. Then we say that that is as far as the behavior of the uh, section is concerned. As far as concrete is concerned, we will completely ignore the tensile strength of concrete. It has got even a very poor strength in tension and whatever is available that we will ignore it. So for all the calculations, we will consider that the tensile stress of concrete is, tensile strength of concrete is neglected. Then the ultimate strain in outermost fiber that is the topmost fiber is in compression. So there the strain will be limited by limiting the loads in such a way that the strain maximum strain at the outermost fiber in compression is 0 0.0035 and the stress strain curve for concrete now we consider it in this fashion. So we have got almost a straight portion then it flattens out and in uh, from the strain of 0 0.002 up to a maximum strain of 0 0.0035 we will consider that 
the elongation or the compression occurs without change in stress so there will be a flat portion in this region from the strain of 0 0.002 to the strain of 0 0.0035 so between these two strains the concrete will only deform but the stress will remain the same so that is what we are saying on y axis we have got the stress and it, the stress remains <coughs> same while considering the design uh, aspect over there we don't take this fck as our design stress but limit it to 0.67 uh, fck so if you have got m 20 concrete then 0.67 of m 20 will be the design stress but it is further limited by this partial safety factor gamma m this gamma m for concrete partial safety factor is about 1.5 so we further reduce it by uh, 1.5 so we get the maximum compressive stress to the extent of 0.67 upon 1.5 which is roughly 0.45 so we take the maximum compressive stress to the extent of 0.45 of uh, fck over there and the maximum strain in the extreme fiber where the strain varies from zero and neutral axis to maximum at the extreme fiber there the strain is limited to 0 0.0035 so that is as far as the stress strain curve for concrete is concerned uh, as far as the stress variation is concerned for example you take this cross section and let us say that the bending has occurred and uh, the uh, deformation has taken in this particular fashion at extreme fiber we have got a strain of 0 0.0035 at some point below that we will have a point at which the strain is 0 0.002 so between these two points we say that the strain is changing but my stress will not change so the stress will remain the same because we are considering the stress strain curve in this fashion so between 0 0.02 to 0 0.035 0 0.035 the stress remains same so we have got the straight portion for the stra stress diagram and thereafter it reduces to finally becoming zero at neutral axis so our stress diagram is in this fashion while the strain diagram is linear because we are making the assumption that plane section before bending remain plane after bending so the deformation varies linearly the strain also varies linearly but the stress does not vary linearly in the ultimate uh, state the stress remains constant for some uh, portion of the concrete and thereafter towards neutral axis it becomes zero for all points below the neutral axis where we expect tensile stresses we will say that the concrete is expected to carry no tensile stress and tensile stress will be carried only by steel so we have got this area of steel what we have provided and then uh, the stress in that will give us the total tensile stress now that is as far as the behavior of concrete is concerned similarly if you consider steel the uh, high yield deform bar that we use normally for reinforced concrete where the stress strain curve now we have got the stress on y axis and strain on x axis it is a linear curve for a considerable distance and then it flattens out and then the deformation uh, continues for a very long uh, value uh, large value over here uh, as far as the uh, the grade of steel is concerned we say that it is fe415 grade so 415 is the stress at 0.2% elongation which means you consider the stress strain curve and at some point if you unload it it will take a straight path and it will come here at this point so at this point there will be some residual strain left and that strain is 0 0.002 which means we say that the value of stress at which on unloading the permanent strain will be 0.2 percent or 0 0.002 so we say that this is the grade of steel for me 415 is my grade of steel so 415 is the stress at which if i stress my steel steel rod and unload it then on unloading it will give me 0.2 percent elongation so there will be some residual elongation at that point so similarly if it is a 500 steel then we say that this value of stress will be 500 at 500 stress if you unload it then it will show a permanent elongation of 0.2 percent and so on so this 0.2 percent elongation 
is the criteria for deciding the grade of steel and that stress we take as a stress which we can take for our reference and then apply other factors to finally take the go to the design stress okay this is a simple table which shows for different values of uh, strain the value of stress corresponding to that so we have what is various strains indicated over here and the corresponding value of stress which are picked up directly from this particular diagram so at various values of uh, strain and this point we have got the corresponding value of stress so for point 8 uh, fy now we have got some strain at that point which is tabulated in this particular case so we have got the strain and the corresponding stress at that point for fe 415 grade and for fe 500 grade and so on so for these different strain values the corresponding stresses are reported they are sometimes required when you actually want to design the beam uh, to arrive at its load carrying capacity and so on now for these materials there is as i told you there is additional factor which is used to reduce the stress for uh, concrete the partial safety factor is taken as 1.5 while for steel it is taken as 1.15 because steel is a factory produced product so it has got a better quality control so we take uh, slightly uh, uh, larger factor than 1 1.15 and accordingly determine the value of permissible stresses now as far as the stress block parameters are concerned we say that the stress block is not a rectangle but it is a straight portion for some distance which is up to the uh, point zero zero 0.002 the strain and thereafter there is parabolic variation. So if you work out the total compressive force then it will be on this area where for some portion there is a straight variation that is constant value of stress and thereafter there is parabolic accordingly the uh, compressive force is calculated as 0.36 fck multiplied by xu where xu is the neutral axis actually the stress at this point uh, this value that you consider this is 0.36 fck this is 0.36 fck after taking the you can say the material factor and so on and so forth uh, actually th th this is not 0.36 but it is 0.45 or 0.42 or, or uh, as per uh, the strain at that point but to consider the area of this particular stress block it is then uh, an equivalent rectangle is taken for it because for some portion there is straight variation then there is parabolic if you take this parabolic variation and finally convert it the total uh, compressive force is 0.36 fck multiplied by xq where xq is the depth of neutral axis in addition to that we want to see where the resultant compressive force is applied so if it were rectangle all along then it would have been xq by 2 for rectangle but because it is parabolic it is shifted slightly up that is now 0.42 xq so your resultant is uh, located at 0.42 xu and the resultant value itself is 0.36 fck multiplied by xu multiplied by of course width of the beam whatever is there so that will be the additional factor so the area of the uh, section in compression is b multiplied by xu and multiplied by average stress now we are taking it as 0.36 fck and so okay so we say that area of stress block is indicated in this fashion and the position of the compressive force is at 0.42 xu and so on. Okay. Now this is as far as the uh, stress block parameters are concerned. For any area of steel that you are considering, we will say that uh, basic equation that the section must uh, satisfy is that you are applying some lateral load to it, there is a moment developed. The moment would require a couple of forces. So there is a compressive force uh, in concrete and there is a tensile force at the other end. So we, we now equate the compressive force to the tensile force and then determine the position of neutral axis which is xu by d. Now here on the numerator you are considering 0.87 fy which is the tensile stress multiplied by area of steel. So we say that is now the uh, tensile force that you are getting and if you take this denominator on the other side 
this d will cancel and you will be getting 0.36 fck into b multiplied by xc so that will be a compressive force so you are equating compressive force to tensile force and determine the position of the neutral axis so it is now if you simplify this point 87 upon 0.36 it is 2.417 into the percentage of steel which is area of steel upon bd so this factor is now the percentage of steel and uh, multiplied by fy upon fck as per the material properties that you have got and so so you can determine the value of xu upon d for a given percentage of steel and so and for different grades of steel the uh, value prescribed as per the strain that we are considering 0.0035 now this maximum value of the uh, ratio xu by d is for 250 grade that is mild steel it is 0.53 for 415 grade it is 0.48 or 0.479 to be exact and for 500 grade it is 0.46 okay now that is the position of neutral axis the limiting value of position of neutral axis it will not uh, be exceeding this value under any circumstances because you are limiting the strain to a particular value for concrete okay so here now we are considering three different class of problems one where we consider it as a balance section uh, the first one that you are seeing over here so this is now the balance section where we say that the strain in concrete is now 0.0035 and the strain in steel is that maximum strain which is allowed uh, in the given section so we say that you are providing such reinforcement in the given section so that the strain in concrete is uh, having its maximum value the strain in steel has its maximum value and accordingly you will be getting a balanced section that both materials are used to the full capacity sometime for the given section you require beam of certain uh, size for some reason architect specifies this and, and so on and uh, there is not much load on that beam and so on in that case you provide less reinforcement so we call that as an under reinforced section where you you are providing reinforcement less than balance section in that case your uh, strain in steel will be reaching its maximum value but strain in steel will be less so you are getting this neutral axis shifted up rather than the Uh, critical neutral axis for balance section neutral axis is shifted up the result of that is you are having full stress in steel but the stress in steel concrete may be less or to that extent the area in concrete is reduced compression is reduced while in some cases where you require a smaller section but uh, more reinforcement is required than the balance section in that case the neutral axis is shifted down because you are providing more reinforcement so the neutral axis is shifted down the result of that is a large area is required for concrete to balance the tensile stress because you have got more area of steel and so on and so on. so that section we call as over reinforced section so we have got three class of uh, sections the balance section the under reinforced section and the uh, over reinforced section okay and here the limiting value is indicated for uh, this uh, neutral axis which we have seen just now uh, okay now when you consider under reinforced section then we say that the moment of resistance is given by where you have got less reinforcement than the balance section in that case the steel reaches its maximum stress so we have got 0.87 fy into ast now this is the tensile force and the lever arm that you are getting now you can see the lever arm over here okay the lever arm is d minus 0.416 now this is my neutral axis and d is my uh, overall depth of the section up to the center of neutral axis so we can say that here the value of mu that you are getting is obtained by uh, using these various parameters over here while xu by d now you are getting this xu by d which is the Uh, neutral axis position which is obtained by taking this 0.87 fy into ast and this is 0.36 fck into bd accordingly you will be able to get the position of xu by d and you are getting this mu as equal to 0.87 fy ast the same term that you have got and inside the bracket this xu is now replaced by the corresponding term over here accordingly uh, taking terms on one side you are able to get mu by bd square 
विच इज ए फैक्टर ओवर हियर विच इज यूज इन दिस डिजाइन एड ऑल्सो विच इज इक्वल टू पॉइंट एटी सेवन एफ वाई इन टू परसेंट स्टील मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वन माइनस एफ वाई अपॉन एफ सी के इन टू पी टी सो इफ यू एक्सपांड दिस टर्म इक्वेशन देन यू गेट ए कॉड्रेटिंग इन पी टी स्क्वेयर एंड ऑन सॉल्विंग दैट यू विल बी एबल टू गेट फॉर ए गिवन मोमेंट द परसेंट स्टील रिक्वायर्ड सो द कोड हैज गिवन दिस सिंपल टेबल इफ यू सी दिस टेबल which gives or uh, uh, in the first column you have got mu by bd square and uh, here for different grades of steel you get the uh, value of this the area that is percentage steel that you are getting over here so this is reinforcement percentage pt so if you take this mu by bd square as 1 in terms of newton per mm, mm square then you will be able to get here if you see this is 0.295 percent steel you will be requiring for resisting a moment such that mu by bd square is 1 so if you have got some moment and some section you already selected that then you can easily determine the area of steel required by calculating this factor mu by bd square and reading off from this table the value of percent steel accordingly you will be able to provide the reinforcement uh, in this particular case okay so we say that uh, that was for under reinforced section similarly for uh, balance section similar terms are there except that you are now getting this xu maximum that is for balance section and accordingly the similar terms are uh, calculated and the limiting percentage of steel can be worked out for balance section for limiting percentage of steel over here now we say that for singly reinforced section uh, for different grades of steel this limiting percentage of steel is worked out for a balance section so if steel and concrete have both to reach their ultimate maximum stress then we say that this much percentage of steel is required as a balance section very rarely we come across and um, we have to use this because either you have got under reinforced section or over reinforced section because there are many loading combinations for some loading cases it might be under reinforced uh, for some other it may be over reinforced but you have to anyway provide for the largest moment accordingly you will be able to take the uh, area of reinforcement as per the maximum required for that okay now that is as far as the uh, value of uh, the moment of resistance is concerned or the percentage steel over there for uh, uh, beams which are over reinforced then we say that it has got a moment capacity made up of two parts one as a balance section it has got some moment carrying capacity and because your demand is more you are requiring the same section to carry larger moment so that you have additional moment provided by some compression reinforcement and to that extent some tension reinforcement so there is some balance moment carrying capacity and a reinforcement required for balance section and there is additional steel required which is partly uh, provided in compression and similar amount is provided in tension so you have got steel made up of two parts one steel required for balance section additional steel required for that remaining moment which is over and above the balance section so we will say that for carrying out this moment uh, uh, in the given section you have to firstly see how much part of the total moment is carried as a balance section so there is a reinforcement required for that what is the remaining moment for that remaining moment you provide additional steel in tension as well as compression okay so accordingly you will be able to calculate the uh, steel required for that purpose accordingly we will say that this is similar table for uh, determining the reinforcement required for uh, the over reinforced section so here you uh, you will see that this value of okay the mu by bd square starts with 3.46 so it is a double reinforced section accordingly there is some tension reinforcement and some compression reinforcement so you have to work out for a given section when the moment is uh, given you have to firstly check whether it is a singly reinforced or double reinforced depending upon the area of uh, the uh, moment for the balance section so once you have the moment for balance section you check whether this section carries less moment or more moment if it is more moment go to this chart and accordingly for this mu by bd square you will be able to get some reinforcement in tension side 
and some reinforcement in compression side. Accordingly, we will say that a section which is either a singly reinforced or doubly reinforced can be determined by using these two ta tables. One for singly reinforced, there you can see if it is a singly reinforced section where the moment is less than the balance, then directly use that where you will be getting only tension reinforcement. While if it is over reinforced section, then you have to use this table and then accordingly work out the tension steel as well as compression steel. Okay, now that is as far as the basic theory is concerned. Now we will consider a simple example. So this uh, beam which is simply supported 8 meters in span and carries a load of 5 kilo Newton per meter. So if this moment is, uh, this load is applied, then you are getting this bending moment diagram which is parabolic with a maximum moment of 110 uh, kilo Newton meter over here. Okay. Now with this moment, now we say that we will try to see whether uh, as far as E tab is concerned, for E tabs it works out the moment for that particular case, so there is a moment and it works out the reinforcement for that, it is uh, internally able to check it's whether it is a singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. If it is singly reinforced then there is no top reinforcement required. So it is giving top reinforcement at zero and accordingly only bottom reinforcement is required. And similarly it will work out that shear reinforcement which we will see subsequently. Okay, now that is as far as the uh, E tab is concerned. Now as far as normal procedure is concerned, we have to check whether the uh, design moment uh, what you are getting uh, in this particular case the design moment itself is 110 kilo newton meter and we will say that for balance section now you have to check whether the moment that you require uh, or moment that the section uh, uh, requires for balance uh, behavior whether it is more than or less than that in this present case this moment is less than the balance moment accordingly we will take it as a singly reinforced section and the section is designed for that particular case ok now that is as far as singly reinforced section is concerned if you consider the same beam for example this 8 meter span instead of 5 kilo newton now i have applied a larger load 50 kilo newton per meter for which the moment now you can see it is about 600 and odd some 650 kilo newton uh, meter is the moment now for this moment when you again you consider e tabs then it is giving you uh, bottom some bottom steel 3749 mm square and there is a top reinforcement also compression reinforcement 1786 in this particular so we now see that for the given moment it is able to give you both whether it is singly reinforced only bottom steel if it is doubly reinforced then it is going to give you the bottom steel which is in tension and then there is compression steel as simple as that okay now in the present case <coughs> we will say that for the given beam the limiting moment now in this case is 302 kilo newton meter the actual moment in the present case is 650 so now we see that we have got a section which is uh, over reinforced you require more steel than that required for balance section the balance moment carrying capacity is only 302 so we say that out of the 650 kilo newton meter 302 moment is the balance moment there is some reinforcement required for that and balance of that moment that is 650 minus 302 that will be resisted by a compression steel and tension steel so they will form a couple and there is a moment carried by that couple so now we see that we are getting now this limiting percentage of steel over here now you can see that it is 1.19 percent this is for balance section so there is some reinforcement required which in the present case is 1927.8 that is as far as balance section is concerned so if it is balance section it is going to carry some moment 302 kilo newton meter for that 1927 is the uh, reinforcement required the balance moment is now 650 so you can see that this is 650 minus 302 is the uh, reinforce uh, is the moment remain to be resisted by uh, additional tensile steel and some compression steel okay so now we say that this additional moment divided by the stress in steel uh, multiplied by its lever arm so lever arm will correspond to 
the distance between the tension steel and the compression steel earlier we had to determine that uh, 0.42 xu as the position of neutral, the compressive force but in case of doubly reinforced section where you are considering that part of the moment resisted by only compression steel and tension steel it is only distance between the two reinforcement so that is now d is the uh, uh, overall depth of the section up to the bottom reinforcement from that you have to subtract the cover for top reinforcement that is d dash so that reinforcement is now uh, uh, as 1932 so you have 1927 as a reinforcement for balance section 1932 for doubly uh, reinforced section so we say that the total area of steel as per this concept that we are now working out theoretically is 3859.8 while e tab has given 3749 perhaps there was some additional uh, refinement which e tab has done internally so we are getting about uh, 1 or 2 percent uh, variation between the theoretical calculation that we perform 3859 and that given by the e tabs over okay so we say that as far as the design of beam is concerned we have got a very simple concept that firstly we have to check whether it is a singly reinforced or doubly reinforced if it is singly reinforced then directly you can take that uh, table and directly determine mu by bd square and accordingly determine the okay. once you work out mu by bd square then we say that for given value of mu by bd square you can directly read off the value of reinforcement percentage and then the design is ready ok that is as far as singly reinforced section if it is doubly reinforced section no problem with that if you are using the table then your procedure remains same you have to only work out mu by bd square check whether the value of mu by bd square is less than in this particular case 3.46 if you see over here this is 3.46 as far as the ok so for 3.46 that is the starting value if the value of mu by bd square is less than that you see the other table and accordingly work out directly the percentage of steel and so so we can say that the problem of determining the reinforcement for a given beam is now very simple we have to only see whether you are using the table if you are using table then no need to check anything directly work out mu by bd square if the value is pertaining to first table singly reinforced if it pertains to second then you will be getting both the reinforcement the top as well as the bottom and accordingly your answer is ready as far as the shear reinforcement is concerned the shear reinforcement is directly given by asv area of steel upon the spacing as vs upon 0 0.87 fy into d so we are able to get this area of reinforcement per uh, meter or per millimeter as per uh, the units so you have got some shear now the shear that we are considering is made up of actually the total shear that you are considering while some part of the shear is carried by concrete so we have to now subtract that from the uh, total shear so you have got this total shear from that you remove that part carried by concrete and then that balance part is only to be resisted by reinforcement so your stirrups will be provided for resisting that part of shear which is the difference between the total shear minus the shear carried by concrete for uh, working out shear carried by concrete that tau c value is given in the code itself roughly it depends on the percentage of steel and so on so depending upon that you can work out the permissible stress or the uh, strength of concrete to carry shear so that part you remove from this total shear and then balance you have to consider uh, uh, for uh, providing the stirrups so you can provide the stirrups so it is uh, 344 mm square per meter or whatever is the value that you are getting accordingly if it is two legged stirrups then you can take those two legs get the area of the two legs together and accordingly you will see as to how many such stirrups are required per meter and then determine the spacing of the uh, stirrups and so so this is as far as the design of flexural member is concerned 
So we say that the design of flexural member is not a, a big task at all. You, if you are using table, then it is straightforward task. In ETABs, of course, the things are made much simpler because it directly gives you. If it is doubly reinforced automatically, it works out for the given uh, movement, the tension reinforcement as well as compression reinforcement. So with this, we come to the conclusion of the design of beams subjected to some moment, whether it is balance or under reinforce or doubly reinforced. So that is as far as the beams are concerned. The next task we have to consider is the design of columns. Okay. So we say that if you have to design the columns, then the problem becomes more complicated because for columns, the uh, uh, forces uh, applied are the axial force as well as bending moment. The bending moment also for columns is of two categories. One, it may be a uniaxial bending moment or it may be biaxial moment. So we have got different class of problems for columns. Column carrying only axial load, column carrying axial load plus uniaxial moment and column carrying axial load plus biaxial moment. For each of these, the concepts are slightly involved and we shall just have a quick look at the initial concepts and then see how the uh, actual working is done by the uh, software as well as by the uh, various formulae which are available for uh, our presentation. the entire presentation for columns though we may, not, we may not be able to complete everything today but we will consider the basic concept to start with. So the entire presentation is made up of these six seven parts introduction to start with we will just see what are the uh, problems involved in it basic assumptions in terms of the strain the stress block and so on then we will see how the uh, column with moment is uh, idealized as column carrying eccentric axial load. So that is the basic concept uh, rather than taking moment directly. It is taken as axial load with some uh, eccentricity. Then in which mode the column is going to fail that we will consider. And then the interaction diagram of axial load versus moment and so on that we shall see. And finally we will see how the ETABS handles this kind of problems over here. So we say that Basically, the column that we are considering in any building is a structural member which carries primarily axial force and there is some moment associated with that. So if it is, we will say that for a column, if at all now you want to consider the design of the column, we have to see in what way it is going to fail and then prevent that kind of failure working. So if it is a short column that we are considering, then we will say that if it is a short column, it is going to fail generally by crushing of the material. While if it is a long column, uh, reasonably long, then we will say that it is going to fail by buckling. So we will consider two modes of failure. Out of that, in the reinforced concrete section, we will generally not consider the details of its failure by buckling, but we will rather take its effect indirectly and try to see that if it is a slender column, then in what way the permissible stresses are to be reduced and accordingly we will try to analyze it and design it. Okay. Now we will consider the uh, column, uh, if it is for example, if it is isotropic material where it is same material throughout, then we will say that if it is a short column it will fail by crushing and if it is a long column it will fail by buckling. While in case of reinforced concrete section where you have got a material which is strong in compression but not so strong in tension then we will say that uh, the failure of such columns may be either due to crushing of concrete 
so it is compression failure and there is no tension at all in the collar suppose it is carrying only axial load and there is no eccentricity at all then it is going to fail only by crushing of concrete if there is some little amount of tension developed due to eccentricity of the load or some moment which is there in it where there is some net tension in some part of the column then we will say that if that tension is very small then failure will not occur due to tension but it will be compression failure but such columns are classified differently that it it is primarily a compression failure but there is some tension present in the column in first case there is no tension present in the column it may be variable compression but it is throughout compression while in the second class of problem we have got primarily failure due to compression but there is some tension developed in the column due to eccentricity of the load then there is a category of column where it is primarily a tension failure so it is yielding of reinforcement which occurs over here and then we have got the balance section where it is simultaneously failure of concrete in compression and failure of tension in uh, reinforcement and so okay so we'll say that for rcc columns these are the different modes of failures and accordingly the behavior is uh, idealized in a different way now we provide reinforcement in column uh, generally longitudinal reinforcement and the links are provided or the hoops are provided over there so we say that the longitudinal bars which we are providing uh, in the columns now they have to take various types of uh, loads let us say one is it shares the compressive load so compression is partly taken by steel partly taken by concrete if there is any tensile stress then it is primarily taken by reinforcement then third one is the, to prevent i mean the uh, function of that reinforcement is to prevent the brittle failure in the sense if it is uh, if there is no reinforcement at all then that concrete under the influence of uh, some load that you are applying it suddenly fails without giving any warning because it doesn't have much capacity for deformation while with reinforcement it will deform uh, may allow concrete to get cracks and give you sufficient warning that it is going to fail and accordingly you can take some preventive measures then uh, it has got the reinforcement provides some ductility that is it has got an ability to undergo large deformation while normally concrete uh, has got very small amount of strain 0.0035 that we have seen that the maximum strain permitted is 0.0035 which is 0.35% but for steel the ultimate elongation is to the extent of 14% 14.5% is the permissible value so as against 14.5% elongation of steel for concrete it is only 0.35% so we say that concrete doesn't have much ability to undergo deformation as a result if you want the structure to deform and absorb lot of energy that is to give ductility that is provided by the reinforcement over here and then we have got the effect of creep and shrinkage where concrete will undergo uh, initial shrinkage and that can uh, give rise to some shrinkage cracks in the reinforcement or under creep in the sense if you apply some load on concrete then there is immediately some strain some compression occurs but over a period of time that uh, the deformation of concrete increases further the result of that is today if you have got a beam and some lateral load you have applied today right now as soon as you apply load there is some deformation some beam has uh, undergone some sagging let us say but over a period of time after some time maybe after one year two year you will see that deformation slightly increases the load is not increased the load is same but under sustained load concrete undergoes some additional deformation which is called as creep of concrete so we have got this creep of concrete due to sustained loading and that is resisted by the reinforcement because the re reinforcement or the steel doesn't have any creep effect so its its strength or its deformation characteristic remain same so it prevents to that extent the uh, creep effect in the given structure while another type of reinforcement that you we provide is the transverse reinforcement which are the hooks or the links now the purpose of providing these lateral uh, ties uh, is 
to prevent buckling of this uh, bars over here so you have got these long bars uh, longitudinal reinforcement which is undergoing some compressive load so it has got a tendency to buckle because the length is too large if there is enough cover to reinforcement then perhaps if reinforcement is deep inside concrete it will not buckle but if it is under face only uh, near the face of the concrete uh, concrete surface then we will say that that small cover that you are providing uh, might give way give for buckling to prevent that we are providing these links so that as soon as the bar tries to buckle the links holds it back and uh, prevent the buckling then to resist the shear force in the column so we say that any lateral load that you apply on the column so it gives rise to shear force and that is resisted partly by concrete partly by the lateral reinforcement which you are providing which are nothing but the stirrups in our normal beam then uh, during concreting operation you must have seen that there is lot of uh, rough handling for the material and so on so the bars might get displaced here and there to keep the bars in position we have these uh, links over there so the links also serve the purpose of holding the bars in place and don't allow them to undergo deformation before laying the concrete and so on and so on. then we say that the uh, reinforce the uh, links that you are providing provides a confinement to concrete because under the influence of axial load the poisson's effect allows concrete to undergo lateral deformation now that is prevented by these links which we have got so we say that the reinforcement uh, that you are providing in lateral direction gives you the confinement to the entire uh, concrete thereby concrete also has got some ductility imparted into it and lastly uh, to prevent the brittle failure because you are providing ductility that means the deformation uh, is occurring before the failure occurs so we say that there is a definite warning for such structures where there is large deformation uh, seen in the given structure which gives you enough warning that the structure is overloaded and you have to take some corrective measures and so now as far as the material properties are concerned we have seen that these uh, stress strain curve are the same that we have seen for uh, con column or beam the material properties remain the same now as far as the types of columns are concerned their sections uh, for beam generally we provide either rectangular or t sections uh, but for column there are various options available so we have got these various sections um, l shape columns are also not uncommon or t shape columns that you are providing so it, uh, the reinforcement will also have to be adjusted to the shape of the column and so on and so forth plus there is another class of columns which are the composite columns so if the there is severe restriction on the size of the column then you can embed some steel section into it so these steel sections are embedded in this way that inside the concrete itself you have got the steel section i section or uh, any other type of section that you are considering only while this type of column that we see it is actually a steel column that is pipe and filled with concrete so it can be a concrete inside steel pipe or it might be a steel section inside concrete so both of them are the composite columns and they impart a uh, lot of strength to the given uh, section so sometimes when the severe restriction is there on the size of the columns then you can provide these composite columns and their behavior is reasonably complicated but any way tools are available for designing such types of columns and so okay now for a basic assumption that we make in designing the columns we say that the same assumption that we have made for beams are now also made here that the plane section uh, before bending remain plane after bending due to bending moment in the column itself while stress distribution is concrete is assumed to be rectangular trapezoidal or parabola so depending upon the position of neutral axis you will be getting and this type of strain that is present over here and the same assumption that we have made that the tensile strength of concrete is neglected here also we make assumption for tensile strain then stresses in reinforcement are guided by the actual strain and the stress strain relationship for steel the maximum strain in concrete under axial compression only 
that there is compression only throughout the section is limited to 0.002 while if there is some tensile stress on the other face then the strain is limited to 0.0035 increase in strain is permitted if you have got tensile strain strain on the other face and the maximum strain in highly compressed fiber when you have got um, compression on one face and tension on the other face then it is limited to 0.0035 or here uh, uh, reduce compression on the other face that we, I will explain in the sketch itself ok so here we say that if it is a column carrying only compression uniform compression then the strain is limited to 0.002 so we see that the strain is limited if it is uniform compression no eccentricity at all ok if there is some amount of eccentricity but not leading to tensile stresses then you have got large compression on one face little less compression on the other face then the strain at this point is not permitted to go to 0 0.0035 but it is limited to 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 of this strain so whatever is the strain at this face 0.75 of that is to be subtracted from 0 0.0035 now if it is 0 0.0035 in this case where you are getting tensile stress on the other face here the stress on the other face is not tensile but is compressive only it is reduced in that case this strain is not permitted to go to 0 0.0035 but slightly less than that to the extent of the strain at this point so this point strain is to be considered 0.75 of that is to be subtracted from the maximum value of 0 0.0035 while if it is a column carrying lot of bending moment so that there is tensile stress on the other face and one face is carrying compression in that case the maximum compressive strain is 0 0.0035 and at the other end of course whatever is the strain as per the uh, linear variation in that and so so we say that for large eccentricity of axial load the strain is permitted to go to 0 0.0035 while otherwise it is limited to slightly lesser value and so on. Then we say that uh, the load carrying capacity of column for designing the columns one is where there is no eccentricity at all but if you see IS code then code says that in spite of that that there is no eccentricity at all you take some minimum eccentricity to the extent of 20 millimeter or depending upon the size of the column its length and so on so some minimum eccentricity is required to be taken if you don't take that minimum eccentricity into account then the permissible load on the column is limited to 0.4 fck into area of concrete plus 0.67 fy multiplied by area of steel so here this area of concrete that you are considering is uh, strictly speaking is the gross area minus the area of reinforcement because when you provide some reinforcement in that area in that zone the concrete is not there so you have to subtract the area of reinforcement from that so area of steel is replacing that much area of concrete and accordingly we say that gross area of concrete can be taken and then that much area of reinforcement is subtracted to finally determine the load carrying capacity of the column ok now that is as far as <coughs> the uh, load carrying capacity of axial loaded column is concerned then we say that uh, we have got two class of problems one where the uh, stress is compression throughout if it is compression throughout then we say that from the maximum strain that you are getting up to the point the strain of 0 0.002 the stress remains constant and then it changes parabolic ok so we have got this parabolic variation so depending upon the position of neutral axis you will be getting some value of stress at this point and accordingly you have to work out what is the load carrying capacity of that point ok now that is as far as the uh, section where it is in compression throughout that part is concerned if it is a limiting section where the entire section is in concrete but at the other end the stress is zero so if we take such a variation 
then here you have got maximum strain of 0 0.0035 at some point it will be 0 0.002 and at the other end if the eccentricity of load is such that at the other end uh, the strain is 0 and at one end now we will limit the stress or the strain to 0 0.0035 so you are getting the maximum stress at this point zero stress at this point and there is straight variation up to 0 0.002 and then thereafter there is parabolic variation and so while if it is a uh, section with large eccentricity where the neutral axis is within the section so then we have got some area of column in tension some uh, the remaining part is in compression and accordingly we will say that we are getting this stress variation in this fashion where up to 0 0.002 there is constant stress then there is parabolic variation up to neutral axis and finally you are getting the remaining part in uh, uh, the tension okay. Okay. <coughs> then in the modes of failure which we have seen earlier that it is column with uh, RCC columns you consider failure due to crushing of concrete only these three modes of failure we have seen while for balance section it is the failure of all the uh, I mean uh, concrete as well as steel while as far as the interaction diagram is concerned the construction of that we will see subsequently so you have got column carrying some axial load with some eccentricity and so on if the eccentricity is very low then you are getting some zone of this interaction diagram where it is uh, we will say failure due to compression only so this much area some part of the uh, interaction diagram where we say that it is primarily the compression failure if you take the other extreme in this part the lowest part then that is primarily the tension failure where you will consider large moment in the given uh, section so the moment is very large axial force relatively small in that case the failure will be due to tension while in between now we will say that you are getting compression failure but there is tensile stress of reasonable amount and uh, the failure may be due to combined action and it may be a balance failure or it may be partly compression failure or partly tension failure and so on ok so we say that we are getting this zone where there is large moment and small amount of axial force so it will be primarily a tension failure in the uppermost portion where there is uh, axial force very large when the moment is very very small in that case it will be uh, compression failure and so ok <coughs> so we say that the interaction diagrams are uh, a key to designing columns which are carrying axial force plus moment so we will consider uh, first part which is the column carrying axial force and uniaxial moment if there is uniaxial moment in the column then we will say that for designing such columns you have to see that there is some axial load and there is some moment applied on the given column so you have got the section of the column ready say maybe 300 by 600 whatever it is there is some axial force there is some moment and so on now you have to design this particular column so what you have to do is you consider some arbitrary percentage of reinforcement minimum as per IS code is 0.8 percent so you take 0.8 percent now as far as the given moment is concerned there is some axial load and moment you have to see that the column is able to resist that load and moment so you take some position of neutral axis so for a given position of neutral axis you work out the stress block parameters you work out the load carrying capacity you work out the moment and see whether the demand on that section is less than that or more than that. if it is more than that you change the position of neutral axis and repeat the process until you come to a conclusion that at some position of neutral axis it is able to resist it. if it is not able to resist it at all for any position of neutral axis then you increase the percentage reinforcement and repeat the process and so on and so forth so for every percentage of steel you carry out calculations for different position of neutral axis and then see as to for which uh, position of neutral axis and for which percentage of steel 
you are able to resist the applied load and the moment now these interaction diagrams are constructed using these different positions of neutral axis for example if you consider in this case see they have given uh, here the parameter p upon fck so you are getting some grade of steel and it is p upon fck which varies from very small value 0 0.02 to 0.28 and so on so for any of this percentage for example this curve if you take for this particular curve for this curve you will see that for different position of neutral axis if there is this much axial force it can carry there only this much moment it will carry so if you take any point over here it has got an x coordinate and it has got a y coordinate x coordinate over here represent the moment so this much moment it is going to carry and this much axial force it is going to carry so we say that for any position of neutral axis the capacity of that section for that uh, position of neutral axis is to carry so much axial load so much moment change the position of neutral axis you are getting another combination and so on so for different combinations of uh, or different position of neutral axis you are able to get different combinations of load and moment now all these combinations are then plotted over here that for different position of neutral axis it can take so much moment and zero axial load or it can take so much moment with so much axial load and so on and so forth likewise for different percentage of steel this interaction diagram is constructed so for you now the problem is very simple you have got some load some moment and the section is given b and d that is there so for that you work out the factor pu upon fck bd mu upon fck bd square and for that uh, value you work out what is the percentage of steel required that is p upon fck so we see that once someone takes all this effort to construct this uh, interaction diagram then for next user the problem is very simple you have to only check for each loading case what is the maximum load what is the maximum moment and for that you work out the percentage steel so we see that as far as the uniaxial moment is concerned that is axial load plus moment about one axis only if that is the case then we say that the problem is extremely simple you have to only work out two factors pu upon fck bd and mu upon fck bd square accordingly you work out the reinforcement percentage from this interaction diagram so we say that the interaction diagram thereby is a very handy tool and uh, it makes the life very simple for uh, person who is having an access to the interaction diagram and so on. so if you consider now axial load and uh, uniaxial moment for a simple column for example we will take a simple example where the column is 300 by 500 and there are loads applied on it so we say that for this particular column there is only an axial force there is no moment at all for example you have got a column like this other properties are indicated over here that the length of the column is so and so and these are all part of the e tab output the section is given then the material properties and other things are given so you have got size of the column the cover to reinforcement is indicated uh, 30 mm for uh, torsion that is uh, considering the entire uh, section uh, carrying uh, the uh, torsional moment so that there is cover to reinforcement on the sides okay uh, material property that is e value that is indicated that is young's modulus the crushing strength of concrete that is grade of concrete is indicated for steel it is 415 grade okay uh, yield stress and uh, yield stress in steel okay now as far as the material uh, properties are concerned you have got partial safety factor for concrete it is 1.5 and for steel it is 1.15 so this is all part generated by uh, eta which is part of the data it is taking by default these factors and directly the uh, axial load now is indicated as 1660 kilonewton there is no moment at all and there is 
the percentage steel which is uh, i think indicated over here okay now this is 5 plus 5 that is 10 plus 2 so it is 12 bars of 20 uh, 16 dia which are cons considered in this case accordingly the percentage steel is already indicated for that it works out the demand capacity ratio once you give a section with reinforcement suppose you have decided or for some reason the data is available that this column carries uh, this column has got so much axial load and so much reinforcement is already provided then you can work out what is the demand capacity ratio it is not a problem of designing but it is a problem of working out capacity of the column so once you work out uh, the capacity of the column then you can see what is the demand capacity ratio that the actual load is so much its capacity is more than that so you are getting demand capacity ratio less than 1 so so long as demand capacity ratio is less than 1 it's fine it is able to i mean it is a safe section over here similarly uh, it can give you the uh, links over here depending upon the shear force but here some nominal links are provided because column is carrying only axial load and so on while theoretically we say that theoretically if there is no eccentricity at all to the column then theoretical load cal calling capacity is given by this 0.75 fy into area of steel and 0.45 fck into <coughs> 0.45 fck into area of concrete now here area of steel we have got 12 bars of uh, 12 uh, diameter accordingly this area of reinforcement is worked out area of steel net area of steel is worked out uh, grade of concrete and so on so its load carrying capacity is 2094 and uh, demand capacity ratio is 0.792 now this demand capacity ratio is worked on the fact that we are taking no eccentricity at all if there is no eccentricity then this is the uh, expression for load carrying capacity while if you consider nominal eccentricity say minimum eccentricity which ETAPS considers as minimum eccentricity accordingly the load carrying capacity is 0.67 FY into AS plus 0.4 rather than here it was 0.45 and here it was 0.75 while if it is minimum eccentricity then the load carrying capacity is reduced because some initial moment we have to consider for its design for which now we get the load carrying capacity of 1863 and the demand capacity ratio is 0.89 same as what we have obtained uh, in e tabs that it was 0.89 over here while here also with minimum eccentricity we are getting it as 0.89 i think uh, with this we will conclude uh, for today uh, the biaxial bending and the uh, aspect for uh, using e tabs and so on that we will consider next time i think today we will stop for the day and continue with biaxial movement because biaxial uh, bending involves some involved calculations in uh, treating both the moments along in the axial force and so on. I think then we will consider subsequent. Okay.